Hello class, this video we are going to cover 14.8, which is change of variables. So um, in this section, we do talk about the Jacobian a lot. And Jacobian is really like the factor that allows you to change the variables in an integration. And if you recall back in, and they cover this uh, in the lecture slides, but back when we were converting from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates, um, we always said that dx dy or dy dx um, would convert into r dr d theta. It always had that extra factor of r in there, okay? That r actually comes from the Jacobian, okay? However, sometimes we may need to change the variables and it may not necessarily be in polar coordinates, okay? Um, and so in that regard, we need to have, well, how did they come up with this R, right? So what was the method behind that, okay? And that is essentially what is the Jacobian, okay? And the Jacobian method to figure out that extra factor to help me change the variables, okay? So in this assignment, there's not too many problems. There's only eight problems. However, I didn't do all of them um, because I think on number three, well, on number three, I accidentally typed my answer for number four. So that's why you see the X and then the same answer. Um, so I didn't answer number three. I didn't even do number three. Since it didn't have anything in red, I didn't want to do it for you. So you do have one left to do on your own. Um, and then I think it's number eight that I skipped as well. I did number seven. I just didn't do number eight. Okay. And the whole purpose of changing the variables is because if I try to integrate something like this, I would literally have to split my integral up into four pieces. So I'd have to do my x's from zero to one, and then my y values from zero to whatever the equation of this line is. And then similarly, I'd have to do the same thing for this part, and then for this part, and for this part. Because it's um, because it's symmetric, I might be I might be able to get away with just multiplying the area of this one little section um, by four. However, if you move it off of the center of the uh, coordinate system and now you place your square over here, it's a little bit hard to integrate that. That you definitely would need to cut into the four pieces so that you could get from y equal to one to y equal this value from x zero to two, or I'm sorry, one to two. Then over here, your y value would go from one to whatever the equation of this line is, and your x's would go from zero to one. And then down here, it'd be from this value up into y equals one, this line y equals one, and then of course your corresponding x values. So you definitely don't wanna split up your integral into four different pieces. It will make it a little bit more complicated, okay? So to avoid having to split your integral, um, you can do what's called a change of variables, okay? And so that's what we're essentially gonna go over um, is the application of that. So for the first, uh, two problems, actually the first three problems, all it's asking us for is the Jacobian. And so I did write down the formula of the Jacobian from the um, lecture slides. Now I might have used different notations, but all this means is the partial derivative of X with respect to you, the partial derivative of Y with respect to you, partial derivative of X with respect to V, and partial derivative of Y with respect to V. So the first thing I did for both of my two functions that were given was I distributed my coefficient and I got these two terms. And then I distributed my coefficient here and I got these two terms. From there, I went ahead and did my partial derivative with respect to u. So I get this coefficient and that becomes zero. My partial derivative of x with respect to v, this becomes zero. And then the derivative of that is just positive one fourth. Now I move over here, the derivative of this with respect to u is one fourth and then zero. And then the derivative with respect to v would be zero and then one fourth positive. So then I put everybody in the proper location. So x u goes here, y u here, x v, y v. And then I just do the determinant. So this one times this one is negative one sixteenth minus this one times this one, which is one sixteenth. So I get negative 2 sixteenths or negative 1 eighth, okay? And so negative 1 eighth is my Jacobian. So if I were to change my variables from X and Y to U's and V's, I would have to have this factor in my integral. Now, um, number two is very similar. 
except I didn't have to distribute my fraction because this was already pretty plain. So the derivative with respect to u is six and zero. The derivative with respect to v is zero and negative one. The derivative of y with respect to u is three and zero. And then the derivative of y with respect to v would be zero and positive five, okay? So then, um, and I just wanted to point out because it gives you this notation and it asks you for this, the derivative of xy um, with respect to uv. And that is essentially what the Jacobian is, okay? So I'm literally just finding the Jacobian again. So I put everybody in the correct locations inside here, and then I grabbed the determinant. And so I found out that that was 33. Now, number three, I leave to you. I know I have it answered here, but I just accidentally typed this answer in the wrong box, okay? So negative six U is not the answer for number three. And as you can see, it has a red X, so it's definitely not the answer, right? Um, but if we work on number four, it is asking for the same thing. So for number four, these are my two functions. So the derivative with respect to u is actually gonna be v minus six, and the derivative with respect to v is gonna be u and zero. The derivative of y with respect to u is gonna be v, and the derivative of y with respect to v will be this coefficient u, okay? So I placed everybody in the proper locations according to this formula up here. And then I did my uh, determinant. So I did this one times this one, and I didn't actually multiply it. I just wrote it out what was going to get multiplied. And then this one times this one, and that one I did multiply. So I went ahead and distributed my u here, and I got these two terms. But then I had to minus the uv because of this term. So that canceled out the uv terms, and I ended up with just negative 6u. So for number five, they want us to change the region, okay? So this is what's happening here. So they give you a region and they give me my two functions, x equal to 9u plus 2v and y equal to 9v. And they give me this image here where my vertices are 0, 0, 2, 9, and 9, 0, okay? And so what you've got to do is you've got to convert this over to a new region but in the UV plane. So notice I drew in UV coordinates, U and V, and I've got a, uh, this image is gonna turn into another image, okay? Now you already see what the image is, but how did I get that, okay? That's important. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each point individually and work with what we've got. So for the first point, zero, zero, when I use zero, zero, that means that the X is zero and the Y is zero which means in these two equations that that X becomes zero and then the Y becomes zero. And so then I need to solve these two equations. Now there's two ways to solve these systems of equations algebraically. One is to use the elimination method. So I see I have these on both of these equations. So I wanna make them have the same number in front but the opposite signs. So I went ahead and multiplied the top one by negative nine to make it negative 18. And I multiply the bottom one by positive two to make it a positive 18. So then I multiply zero times negative nine, it's zero. Nine u times negative nine is negative 81 u. And positive two v times negative nine is negative 18 v. Zero times two is zero. Nine v times two is 18 v. And then when you use the uh, addition of these two equations, these two will cancel out, leaving you with zero equal to negative 81 u right? Zero plus zero is zero, and this term just comes down. If I divide by negative 81, I get that u equals zero, okay? Um, so, and then when I know what u is, I just pick one of these two equations to plug the u back into. And so I chose the top one because the top one had a u in it. So I plugged in zero, nine times zero is zero. Um, zero plus two v is just two v. And then I divided both sides by two, and I got that V equals zero. So the point X, Y, zero, zero, turned into U being zero and V being zero. So it actually stayed the exact same. And I did plot this point on here first because that's the first one that I found. Now, this was using the elimination method. I can solve the same system, right? This equation right here, this system is the same as this system. Um, and you can solve it using elimination method or substitution, I'm sorry, substitution method is the other method. So in substitution method, you would solve for one of the variables. 
So here I divided both sides by nine and I got that V equals zero. Then I plug that value into the other equation for V and it turns out that I got zero for U. So I do get the same two um, points, okay? So solve the system using the method you prefer. I'm gonna do it a certain way on this video, but if you chose to do it the other way, that is totally okay. You should end up with the same exact answers, okay? So now I'm gonna move on to the other point. I know that zero, zero basically transformed into zero, zero, okay? But now let's see how we're gonna to transform to nine. So that means that the X is two and the Y is nine. So we have X, which is two now, equal to nine U plus two V. And then Y, which is nine now, equal to nine V. I went ahead and did substitution. So I divided both sides of this bottom equation by nine, and I got that one equals V. Then I plugged that one into the top equation for V, and I got two equal nine U plus two. I minus the two over, which gave me zero. I divided by the nine, which gave me that U equals um, zero. So then two nine became zero for U, but one for V, right? Zero for U and one for V. And so then that became the point zero one, which was this point here. So this top number, top point turned into this top point. Finally, we're gonna move on to the last point, which was nine zero in our original uh, region. So that means X equals nine and Y equals zero, which means the X equation turns into nine equal nine U plus two V and the Y equation turns into zero equal nine V. If I divide both sides by nine in this bottom equation, I'll get the zero equals V. Then, excuse me, I'll substitute that into the top equation for V. So two times zero is just zero. So it's like, that's not really there. So my equation becomes nine equal to nine U. And if I divide both sides by nine, I get that one equals U, okay? So then now I have the point nine zero has turned into one for U and then zero for V. And so that's this point here. So this point transform into this point. And those are my new vertices, which means if I connect all of them together, um, we have created the new region. And if you look here at all of these images, the one that has the points the same as me is this bottom right hand, right? It has zero, one, zero, zero, and then one, zero, just like mine. Okay. So for number six, it's very, very similar. It's just they gave me functions with fractions this time. And if they give you functions with fractions, my biggest advice is to get rid of those fractions, okay? So I did go ahead and distribute the one half and distribute the one half here. And so I got this for X and I got this for Y. Then I noticed that they all had a common denominator of two. So I multiplied every single term by two. And what that did was, is it gave me two X. Here the twos cancel, so I just have one U or U. Here the twos cancel, and I just have plus one V or V. Here this becomes two Y. Here the twos cancel, and I have one U or just U. Here the twos cancel, and I have minus one V or just minus V. So then for my first point, there's four of them this time. So my first point, I think I took this one and then I went around this direction, okay? I highly recommend that you do start somewhere and then you just go around. That way you make sure you get all of them and you convert all of them, okay? So for the first one, zero, one, um, that means that X is zero and Y is one. So I took this top equation and I plugged in zero for X and I took this equation and I plugged one for Y. That ended up being zero equal to U plus V the bottom one ended up being two equal to U minus V. Since um, I already have numbers that are the same with the opposite signs in the front, I did choose to use the elimination on this problem. So these would wipe out. And if I add the two lines together, I get zero plus two, which is two, U plus U, which is two U. And if I divide both of those by two, I end up with one equal to U. And then I can plug that one into either one of the equations, but I just chose to plug it into the top one so I have zero equals one for U plus V. I minus one over and that's how I ended up with negative one equal to V. So then that means that the point X, Y turned into the point one for U and negative one for V. 
Now I'm gonna move on to the negative point, the next point, which is one, two. So X becomes one, two, or yeah, X becomes one, Y becomes two. So this turns into two equal to U plus V. And this bottom equation turns into four equal to U minus V, minus V. So these cancel again, U plus U is two U, two plus four is six. If I divide both sides by two, I get that U equals three. Then I substitute that back in the top one for U. And so I had to minus three on both sides and that's where I got the negative one equal to V. So this point X, Y, one, two, turned into three for U and negative one for V. And then finally, um, or not finally, because this is the third point, we have the third point, which is three halves, three halves. So it's two times three halves for X, two times three halves for Y. The twos cancel, so I get three equal to U plus V. Here, the twos also cancel, so I get three equal to U minus V. When I add these two together, I get six. When I add these two together, I get two U. I divided both sides by two and I got three equal to two U. Um, okay, I just got hesitant and thought I stopped recording, but I'm good. Okay, then I plugged in U in here for U. So three equals three plus V and I minus three on both sides and I got zero equal to V. So then the point three halves, three halves turned into three for U and zero for V. And then finally, when I do the last point, one half, one half, when I multiply the X times two, I get one. And when I multiply the Y value times two, I get one. These still cancel, one plus one is two, U plus U is two U, divide both sides by two, you get one equals U. Substitute that back into the top equation, you get one equal to one plus V. If I minus one on both sides, I get zero equals V. So the point one half, one half turns into the point one for U, zero for V. So I graphed all three of those points. So the first point was one, neg one negative one, so positive one and negative one. The second point was three and negative one. The third point was three and zero. And the last point was one and zero. And so these are all of the points. And if I connected all the dots, I ended up with this region down here, okay? And so we had to find the graph that matched that. And this one over here is the one that seems to match it. It has the points one, zero, three, zero, one, negative one, three, negative one, okay? Um, and once the image looks like this, it's a lot easier to integrate. You would just integrate it, um, the X values going from one to three and the Y values going from negative one to zero. Okay. So for number five, number five wants me to actually integrate this, okay? So I do need to know what the new region is gonna look like to help me set up my integral, okay? I also need to know the Jacobian to change the variables of my integration. And I definitely need to know the functions in order to write this function in terms of um, U's and V's, okay? So the first thing I did was go try to figure out what the new section, the new region is gonna look like. Because without that, we really can't do the problem. I can't even set up the interval unless I know what it's gonna look like, okay? So this is my X, this is my Y, and over here, it's my U and my V, okay? Um, and this is just an arrow to signify that this region turned into this region, okay? So what I did was I took the two equations that they gave me, X equals one fourth U plus V, Y equals one fourth U minus V. And I went ahead and did the same thing like I did in a previous problem, which is get rid of that fraction by multiplying by four. So I got four X equal to U plus V and did the same over here, four Y equal to U minus V. Now, when I go to figure out the first coordinate, so I like to make a table. So I put all of these points and I went in, it looks like I went in this direction, okay? So I wrote down all of those points there. Now for the first one, X equals one and Y equals zero. So I have four times negative one, which is negative four. And then I have four times zero, which is zero. And so that's where these two equations came from. Then these would cancel and I'd be left with negative four equal to two U. 
And then if I divide by two, I get that negative two equals u. Then I substituted that back into the top one. So negative four equals negative two plus v. And I added two to both sides. So I ended up with negative two equal to v. So this turned into negative two for u, negative two for v. Now I moved on to this one, this point. So this time x is zero, so four times zero is zero, and y was one, so four times one is four. And then these cancel again, I end up with four equal to two u, divide both sides by two, I got positive two for u. Plug that back into the top, I get zero equal to two plus v, I minus two on both sides, and I get negative two equals to v. So for the second point, I got two for u and negative two for v. For the third point, x is one and y is zero. So this becomes four times one, which is four, u plus v, and then four times zero, which is zero, and then u minus v. So that's what you've got there. So then when I combine, I get four, I get two u, these wipe out, and then I divide both sides by two, I get two equals u. Substitute that back into the top, four equals two plus v, I minus two on both sides, I get that two equals v. So for this point, I got two for u and two for v. Now the last point, zero, negative one. So x is zero, four times zero is zero. Y is negative one, so four times negative one is negative four. Then when I combine, I get negative four, two u, these wipe out. And then if I divide both sides by two, I get that u equals negative two. Substitute that back into the top one, zero equals negative two plus v. And then I would have to add two on both sides. So I get two equals v. So that point turned into negative two for u and two for v. So now that we know what our region looks like, we can set up our integral. Um, and in our integral, we can tell that our u's are going from negative two to two and our v's are going from negative two to two. So I do know my bounds for du and dv but this function needs to be in terms of u's and v's. So I went ahead and I plugged in what we, the expression we were given for x squared plus the expression we were given for y squared. Since these two things are factored, I am squaring each one. So when I square the 1 fourth, I get 1 16th. And when I squared um, this, I get u plus v times u plus v, and I just foiled it out here. Now, when I square one fourth again, um, I get one sixteenth. But when I square this, I actually get this whole thing. Now, I have a 16 that was out there in the front. So I went ahead and distributed the 16 to each term. This big plus sign separates these two terms. Okay. So this is multiplied together, which means it's part of the same term. And this is multiplied together, which means it's part of the same term. So I did 16 times this term, which cancels out the 16, 16 times this term, which also cancels out the 16. So I literally just have all of these terms plus all of these terms. So I combine the like terms and it turns out I get two u squared plus two v squared. Now, in order for me to convert the um, variables of integration, I need that Jacobian, okay? So in order for me to find the Jacobian, I did have to distribute the 1 fourth. So I got 1 fourth u plus 1 fourth v and 1 fourth u minus 1 fourth v. I found all of my partial derivatives. I plugged them into the box where like they go. And then I did my determinant and I found that the Jacobian is negative 1 eighth. So the region we know is from u and v and u going from negative two to two, v or v going from negative two to two, u going from negative two to two. And then this whole expression right here becomes this expression right here. And then dA itself becomes the absolute value of the Jacobian du dv, okay? And the absolute value of a negative is actually a positive, okay? Now, what I did here was I fact in my head, I factored out the two so that it would be two u squared plus v squared. And then absolute value of negative one eighth is just one eighth. And so what I did was I simplified that two with this eight and got four, okay? 
Um, but instead of factoring it out and then canceling it with the, or reducing it with the eight, I just went ahead and reduced them both with the eight, okay? And so I get this four. The absolute values though means that this number is a positive one fourth. So do you see the positive one fourth here, okay? And then now the twos are no longer there because they were reduced with the one eight. So then I'm just integrating both of these terms with respect to u. I get u cubed over three plus v squared times u. And then I have to evaluate it at my bounds. So that means um, u becomes two and then u becomes negative two. So I end up, I still have that one fourth out there, but I'm gonna end up getting eight over three plus v squared times two minus negative eight over three plus v squared times negative two. So this becomes, comes down to v squared, negative and a negative become positive eight over three, and this becomes a negative times a negative is positive v squared. So if I combine my like terms, I actually get 16 over three plus four v squared. Um, now that I integrate this with respect to V, I get 16 over three V plus four V cubed over three. And I have to evaluate it from negative two to two. So when I plug in two, and I also got to plug in negative two. So here I get 32 over three. Here I get 32 over three. Here you have a negative times a negative, which turns out positive 32 over three. And here, this is ultimately going to be a negative times another negative, so I get a positive 32 over 3. Adding all of these fractions together, I get 128 over 3, and then these can reduce, and I end up with 32 over 3, okay? Now, number 8 is going to work very much like the way number 7 worked, but I didn't want to do both of them for you because I definitely want you to practice that whole process. One, finding all the points right? So you can figure out what the new region is going to look like. Then that will help you set up your bounds for the new inter for the uh, integral. And then use the Jacobian to change the variables of in the integral. Once you have your integral all set up, you're just evaluating that integral. But this is the end of 14.8.